Now, why do we need a battery charger? So, as we all know that these days, we use a lot of equipment which uses battery. And especially when we are automating things and are due to IoT, we use a lot of rechargeable batteries. But a one-fit solution is not possible because there are different kinds of batteries. Uh, batteries have different shapes, sizes and chemistry. And this requires different charging criteria or parameters. So hello hi and welcome to another DIY live DIY video from EFI. Let's share your host for today. And in this live DIY, we'll be making a simple battery charger circuit. So to keep the battery safe, uh, we require a specialized charger for specific batteries. Now, what happens if we don't have a proper battery? So usually the most common cell we use these days are lithium ion cells, uh, which have different chemistries like LFP, NMC, TPO, LTO, etc. So now what happens is that these cells have different voltages. The nominal voltage of all the cells have di are different. So uh, cells are very volatile. Now, if you overcharge them, they might cause catch fire. If there's an overcurrent, they might catch fire. If you are uh, charging more than the specified seal uh, rating, they might catch fire. Uh, but still it's fine. But when there are multiple cells in a battery, like in a battery pack, if two cells are which are connected in series are having a very uh, which are connected in parallel are having very different uh, voltages, then it might also start fire uh, because of thermal runaway. So to negate the thing, we basically em employ a battery charger circuit. So there are a lot of battery charger circuits available in the markets, but even uh, the phones they have specialized chargers like phone charger or power. Uh, power bank these have specialized charger and one common circuit is this TP4056 this is a this is a very common circuit called TP4056 and this is uh, used a lot for charging single uh, cell single NMC lithium ion cells and it is pretty good circuit it can provide current up to one amp but the main issue is that it can only charge NMC cells you can't use it to charge LFP cells or lithium polymer cells. So that's why uh, today we are trying to make this circuit, which is kept here, uh, which is although not as efficient as other circuits, but uh, you can customize it or you can make it as per your wish. And it is a really good circuit to have. By the way, this is not my original circuit. I bought this circuit from the internet. But since the circuit is very uh, simple and good so that's and can be used for a different kind of sales that's why i'm uh, showing this in the live diy okay uh, first of all this the circuit can be divided into three parts so as you can see the circuit is divided into three parts uh, the main and the most important part is the lithium ion charger circuit or cell charger and balancer circuit which uh, include these components and then to make it more efficient and um, make the circuit more suitable for our batteries. We have a current limiter circuit, which provides these components as also marked in the uh, photo you can see in the screen. And then we have a constant voltage. So for this, we employ LM317 for achieving the constant voltage and constant current. Now the component required for this circuit is, uh, there's a TL431, which is basically a adjustable zener diode. Then we have LM317, uh, which is basically a voltage regulator, which we are using for achieving constant current and constant voltage. Then we have BD140, which is a PNP transistor, and which is one of the most important components for in the ba uh, balance and charging part. Now, apart from that, we have a few uh, diodes, a common diode that are one in 400, 4007, and then few passive components and a port like a potentiometer. So basically these are the components we require, uh, require for this circuit. So as you can see, the components are very basic, very simple, and can be easily sourced from any, any electronic shop. There is nothing which you won't find over the internet or in your nearby electronic shops. Uh, coming to the next part, how the circuit works. So first I'll explain the charging part 
So this is just the charging circuit, which was there in the first uh, image in the rightmost part. So in the charging circuit, as you can see in the top part, we have uh, first I'll consider the left uh, circuit. Sorry, first I'll consider the left circuit. Uh, in the case when PNP transistor is off, which is basically control, controlled by a Zener diode, which is uh, depicted here by TL431P. So uh, we have BD140 at the top, uh, with which four diodes are connected in series. These will act as a load. So when we don't want the cell to charge or when the cell is overcharged, this the current will pass through these diodes and it will uh, basically waste the current, uh, waste the energy, but will protect the circuit and protect the cell. And in parallel to that, we have a LED D5 and connected in series with the 330 ohm resistance to show that when our battery is fully charged. Now, from the base of the BD140, we have a Zener uh, adjustable Zener diode that is TLP431. Uh, so we have connected that in such a way that uh, it is an adjustable reference voltage and it's in the closed position. Like the circ the we can basically uh, operate uh, set the operating value so that it opens or close as per our wish. And when we set the reference voltage in RV1, like by using RV1. So when uh, for our circuit for a single cell, we usually use 4.2 volt as a reference voltage and we can change that thing. I'll show you how we can change that thing, how we can change the reference voltage when I'll be showing the circuit. So uh, we can set a, a specific threshold. So we have set it as 4.2 volt. So whenever our battery, which is denoted by cell one below uh, is above uh, 4.2 volt, then the circuit is closed. The TL431 uh, is closed because of which the BD140 base is connected to the ground and it starts conducting. So it starts conducting and the current flows from uh, our source to BD140 to the diode and energy is wasted. But when the circuit, uh, when the reference voltage is lower than what we have said, suppose it is at 3.8 volt, the battery is at 3.8 volt, then our TLP431 uh, won't uh, will be in open state. And in that case, the above circuit will be uh, completely open. So the current, the voltage will pass, the energy will pass through our battery, which will charge the cell. So this is the basic working of our circuit. Now, how we can improve the circuit? So as you can see that uh, right now we just have a source and we can only use a, a single source and we'll have to provide a 4.2 volt uh, because we can't control it. So, and we also can't control the current. So to make the circuit more uh, durable and better, we'll use, we'll use LM317 to achieve constant current. So for achieving the constant current, we can uh, connect the LM317 as shown in the figure below. Now we can co uh, control the current by uh, using the formula I out equals to VREF by R1. So as you can see, here R1 is basically denoted by R3 in the image in the left side. And VREF is uh, VREF for LM317 is 1.25 volt. So suppose if we want to charge the circuit with a uh, one amp of current, we have to allow a uh, one amp of current, then we'll keep the R1 or R3 in our case as 1.25 ohm, a uh, 1.25 kilo ohm. But since we want that circuit, uh, our cells to have lower current, then we'll be keeping it as 2R or just 2 ohms, uh, 2 ohm resistor we'll be using. So our current will be somewhat around 600 uh, milli, millivolt. Now, this is how we achieve the constant current. So in this case, our current won't exceed uh, 0.6 amp. Now, the next thing to improve a circuit is to have a constant voltage or to limit the voltage. So for that, LM317 is again used and we can use the circuit as shown in the figure and we can easily calculate the amount of voltage we want to show so it's making a, a basically a resistance bridge and we can change the value of resistance and we use the formula v out equals to 1.25 uh, into 1 plus r2 by r1 plus uh, i adjust r2 
but the i it, it just r2 value is very small so we can even neglect that thing and uh, the c c in and c out are for improving the output and reducing the transient response so uh, it's better to have c in and c out both but c out is not mandatory and the main important consideration we should keep while designing this thing is that we should keep the cn really close to lm317's uh, vn port but we can uh, actually we need not delve much into the lm317 because that is something different and we have just incorporated the circuit in our uh, battery charger circuit so this is basically a sing uh, this is for a single cell uh, battery charger and that's how we are achieving the single cell uh, battery charging so this is basically our circuit and uh, as explained uh, initially that a circuit is divided into three parts the left leftmost part is controlling the voltage the middle part the second lm uh, lm317 that is denoted by u2 is for controlling or keeping the co uh, current lower than a certain threshold value which we can set by changing the r3 and the third part is basically our balancing and charging circuit so this is a circuit now one of the most important and best part about this circuit is that we can use the charging and balancing part uh, we can copy and uh, mirror that same thing multiple times to achieve a 2s charger 3s charger 4s charger uh, whatever we want and we can control the current amount of current by changing the r3 value but we uh, be sure that you don't exceed 1.5 because that is the limit of lm317 1.5 amp so this is how we make the circuit so this circuit is really very simple i hope you understood the circuit now the thing is that the working of the circuit can be explained uh, actually i have explained the working but showing the working of the circuit is bit tricky because as you know cells take time to charge i'll just show you i've used a uh, previously uh, made battery pack which i have made in my first diy or basically the third diy of efy so i'm using the same battery pack to provide the current actually i've connected the first cell with the third and taking the third cell so i'm just using 3s uh, for this battery pack 3s a uh, three cells in series i'm not using not connecting the fourth cell so we should have a voltage around 4 uh, 12 volts now as you can see in the multimeter yeah we have voltage around 12 volt now you know that this uh, voltage regulator is decreasing the voltage to something around 4.2 4.3 volt so in this capacitor uh, loose connection okay now it has exceeded 4.4 4.5 So I think there is some loose connection or something. But as you can see, that a uh, voltage uh, regulator thing is working fine. Now this is the current uh, maximum current, like constant current source. But uh, we won't be testing that. Now how we connect the ba battery of or a single cell? So we we'll connect the positive of the single cell with the current source and the S. as we have already seen in the figure and the negative of the cell to the ground of the circuit and that's how the circuit will start charging now uh the first thing we need to do is we'll have to uh like uh set it to 4.2 volt so i have already set it to 4.2 volt so when the battery will full charge completely then it will start glowing the led will start glowing but i i don't have the rps with me to show you how i can set with this uh because of the space constraint but that's how basically the circuit works and anyway the circuit uh, the cell will take a long time to charge to show how it works but trust me it does it does work so this is basically about the circuit and how the circuit works now if you do have any questions uh please come up with your questions i'll be really happy to answer your questions but if you are watching this video at a later stage or at a later time then you can pose a question in uh in the forum or in the youtube video so thanks a lot for watching thanks for joining with us in friday's diy live have a great evening have a great weekend
गुड नाइट